Yeah. Mabuhai. Today we're going to talk about the dream versus the reality of that big move or romantic getaway to the Philippines. You know the drill. People daydream about tropical islands, low living costs, and the friendly locals. But let's not kid ourselves here. It's the women, right? That's the bait. But the Philippines? She's more than a siren song. This place has quirks and charms you won't find on any glossy brochure. So let's pull back the curtain and talk about what it's really like. Dating and finding common ground. Let's get back to the real draw, dating. The women are incredible, right? But there's a catch. You might find some cultural gaps. Music, movies, oops, didn't mean to go there. Humor, it doesn't always translate. So here you are, busting out your favorite 80s references and she's got no idea who you're talking about. You'll have to find other ways to connect, things that don't rely on pop culture, sarcasm, or what you've known. Here you've got to dig a little deeper, get a little creative, and maybe even broaden that personality a bit. Family. Look, we're used to a nice, healthy level of independence, you know? Parents call once a week, maybe. Here, family is pretty much everything. It's like if she's picking between you and a family barbecue, you're probably on the losing end. They'll invite you, sure, but don't expect to be the guest of honor. And privacy? Ha! <laughs> Privacy here translates loosely to that thing foreigners are obsessed with. You'll be invited to every baptism, birthday, and Tuesday night dinner. Family bonds are strong here. Think cemented, not glued. Bureaucracy. Remember the DMV back home? That's a cakewalk. Try getting a driver's license here. There's paperwork, offices, and rules that don't even make sense half the time. They'll require documents that no longer exist. Seriously. And don't get me started on visa extensions. Need patience? persistence, and honestly, a Filipino friend who can help navigate wouldn't hurt. Without one, good luck. You'll be running in circles wondering if Kafka had some secret experience with Filipino bureaucracy. Cultural differences. Are you going to love this Filipino time? I've mentioned it before. Let's just say it has nothing to do with clocks. Here being 30 minutes late is practically punctual. Time's flexible, like the calories in diet soda. Back home, you might be checking your watch every five minutes, wondering if you're being stood up. Here, you could read a novel waiting. And when she finally rolls in, she's as casual as a Sunday stroll. So forget the Swiss clock precision. Here, patience is a muscle you're going to work out. Healthcare. Bring your wallet. Let's talk medical care. Back home, there's this thing called service first, pay later. Here, flip it. Payment first, service later. You don't just waltz into a hospital without showing them you've got cash to cover the bill or insurance. So if you're a live by the seat of your pants kind of guy, you might want to rethink that philosophy. Emergency fund? You'll need it here, and no, it's not an if, it's a when. Find a good hospital, stash some emergency pesos, and don't expect them to know what insurance card you're waving at them. Cash is king here. Cost of living, expectation versus reality. Now, budget videos online make it look like you're moving to a paradise where everything's practically free, but beware. While some things are cheap, those little extras pile up. You want cheese? You want good cheese? That's a luxury item here. Imported stuff doesn't come cheap. Oh, and entertainment? Think it's all gonna be dirt cheap? Well, you'll find out. And be prepared for sudden costs. The ones you didn't factor in but can't avoid. Visas, transportation, the occasional imported snack, and those unexpected weekend trips to the beach. It adds up, trust me. English, expectations versus reality. Ah yes, the English myth. You land here and you're expecting wall-to-wall -wall English speakers. After all, the Philippines has all those call centers, right? Sure, in the cities you're golden, but head out to the provinces, and English takes a little vacation. Now there's a catch too. Sarcasm. That dry wit you're so proud of. Might as well be hieroglyphics. Sarcasm here is an acquired taste, like strong black coffee. You'll be cracking jokes, and the locals will stare at you politely, like you've just recited the quadratic formula. The romance and reality of island living. You came here picturing sunsets, beach walks, and coconuts, right? The simpler life. Well, reality's more like battling humidity and avoiding brownouts. Yes, power outages. So you've got your air conditioning cranked up, ice cold drink in hand, thinking you're living the dream, and boom, power's out. You're instantly reminded that tropical paradise means heat, sweat, and a sudden lack of Wi-Fi. Speaking of which, the internet might be reliable in BGC or Makati. I live in BGC, by the way. But out in the provinces, don't even think about streaming anything in high def. Saving face. Now, if you're coming from a place where people throw around brutal honesty like it's a virtue, get ready for a curveball. Saving face here isn't just a saying, it's a way of life. People might tell a little white lie to keep things smooth, avoid conflict. It's not a lack of truth, it's more like a different truth. So if you're used to direct, tell it like it is chats, adjust your radar because bluntness 
it doesn't really fly here. So you've arrived in the Philippines and the honeymoon phase is over. You're lounging in a humid paradise, but something's gnawing at you. Ah yes, loneliness, that ever persistent companion of every expat who thought paradise came with an auto-populated friend group. Let's get one thing straight. Finding community out here isn't as simple as waving a magic wand. It's more like building a campfire from wet matches. And the real trick? Patience, a sense of humor, and maybe a little desperation. So here's the thing, most of us don't think about community until we're right up against loneliness. At first, solitude feels like a luxury. Finally, no one's breathing down your neck about deadlines or life goals. But a few weeks in and suddenly you're craving more than cheap beer and warm sunsets. You want someone who gets your jokes, who doesn't just smile and nod at your sarcasm like you've dropped a foreign language on them. You want connection, and you want it now. So let's talk about how you go about finding it without losing your mind. The expat communities, to join or not to join, they're like the high school lunchroom all over again. You either fit in or you're the weirdo eating alone by the vending machines. Some expats swear by these groups, huddling together like a football team in the final seconds, clutching onto shared backgrounds and common languages. But here's the catch. Just because you're both from the same side of the pond doesn't mean you're going to be soulmates. In fact, back home, you'd probably cross the street to avoid half these people. But here, in the vast unknown of tropical living, suddenly you're looking at each other like lost puppies trying to create a sense of home from shared accents and maybe a mutual disdain for the humidity. And let me tell you, expat groups can be inexperienced to say the least. You've got the cynics, the sunshine and rainbows optimists, and everything in between. Some folks come here with baggage heavier than their checked luggage, bringing every grudge, complaint, and unresolved issue with them. Find the right group though, and it's like striking social gold. They'll be there to swap stories about brownouts, bureaucratic nightmares, and bad internet. They might even have a lead on where to get a decent slice of pizza. Crucial if you're feeling particularly homeset. Embrace the locals, but don't expect them to be your therapist. All right, here's an insider tip. Don't just stick with expats. That's the rookie mistake. The locals have a charm and warmth you're not gonna find back home. A mix of friendliness and curiosity that'll make you feel like you've stumbled onto the set of a feel-good movie. They'll invite you to family dinners, show you around, maybe even teach you the finer points of karaoke etiquette. But don't expect them to be your emotional tampon. Sure, they're friendly, but they're not here to decode the inner turmoil of the Western mind. Take things slow. Get to know them for who they are, not as some magical key to understanding Filipino culture. Just have a laugh with them. Learn a few words in Tagalog. Aina ko. And don't expect every local to be your best friend. Friendship, real friendship, takes time here, just like it does anywhere else. Get comfortable with uncomfortable infrastructure. Now let's get practical. Community is more than people. It's about feeling settled in the place itself, quirks and all. You're gonna deal with power outages, yeah. Brownouts are real, they happen, and they don't care about your plans. There's no magical button that brings the power back. Internet's gone, tough luck. Call the service provider. And if you're lucky, they'll get someone out there in a few days. Here you learn to improvise, shower at the gym, head to a coffee shop for Wi-Fi, keep a stash of jugs for those unexpected water shortages. It's all part of the ride. And once you accept that things move at a different speed here, you might just learn to appreciate that slower rhythm. And here's where having some local friends really comes in handy. They know the ropes, how to navigate the quirks of living here in a way no Google search or expat guide will teach you. They'll show you tricks, help you find shortcuts, and explain why that three-day fix is more like an optimistic promise than a realistic time frame. There's safety in numbers, finding security and peace of mind. Safety is one of those weird topics where expats can't seem to agree. Some say it's paradise, others act like they're living in a Scorsese film. The truth, it's somewhere in between. Violent crime is very rare, but petty theft isn't unheard of, so be smart. Invest in a good door lock, maybe get a little motion sensor light for your front porch. And if you're really paranoid, go for a condo with built-in security. That's where I live, high-rise condo for 600 American dollars a month. Not bad. Less risk of random strangers waltzing in and you get the added benefit of a front desk keeping tabs on everyone who comes and goes. The real trick to feeling safe, it's not about walls and cameras, it's about knowing you've got a network, whether it's your local friend, the guy who sells you fresh mangoes or balut, or the expat buddy you vent to over beers. Gusto ko isa pa, send me light please. Having a few trusted people around does wonders for your peace of mind. Patience, grasshopper, let's finish with the big one, patience. You might think you know patience, you've stood in line at the DMV, waited on hold with customer service, but here, patience takes on a whole new meaning. Everything moves slower. 
And no amount of foot tapping or passive aggressive sighing is gonna change that. You can throw a fit, but don't expect anyone to rush to make things right. Here, getting mad just means you're gonna be mad and waiting. The real win here is learning to roll with it. Embrace the slow, unhurried pace. Let go of the urge to have everything done now. If anything, this place is gonna teach you the beauty of letting go whether you like it or not. It's almost meditative. Once you get past the initial frustration, you learn to take deep breaths, to let things slide, to actually enjoy the rhythm of island time. So there you have it. You thought you were moving to a postcard perfect paradise, a tropical dreamland, and don't get me wrong, it has its moments every day. But for every coconut tree, there's a brownout waiting to happen. For every beautiful, smiling woman, there's a family gathering, and yes, you're invited. Every time you feel like you're settling in, expect a little reminder that you're on the other side of the planet where things work at a different speed, in a different way. Bottom line, if you're here for the long haul, and I've been here for over a year and a half, keep the romance alive, sure, but brace yourself for a few doses of reality, because out here the fantasy might look good on social media, but living it day to day, that's where the real story begins. God bless you all.